cut or we're not going to cut this deficit. What programs, and you can fit in your answer you want to give right now. Absolutely. But I want you to answer yeah, what programs you'd like to cut. I'm saying, Thanks, David. All right. <laughs> Look, first off, what's most important, and what I voted for and actually got back into law, was a government that had to live within its means. If you want a new program, cut another one. Congressman Toomey voted to rip that out and throw it out the window in 2001. And the largest budget surplus in the history of America disappeared. When he left Congress, we had the largest deficit in the history of America. He went on television and said, deficits aren't important. And the debt doubled during the Bush-Toomey era. Yes, that is back. And we also need caps on discretionary spending because, David, you actually have to have a tongue suppressor so you prioritize. So there are items to, to vote to do. Now, Congressman Toomey voted to cut, you mean. To to cut without to cut. a question. Okay. Congressman Toomey voted against the entire transportation bill twice. He voted against the Veterans Administration to slash it. But there's a better approach. Look, let me give you a couple examples. In armed services, the F-22, we shouldn't buy any more. There's no more Soviet Union. Actually, in the Navy, David, I'm the only one up here that has an example of cost cutting. As head, three star Admiral charged the Navy $70 billion warfare program, which only 65 CEOs in a corporation had a larger market value in their corporation, had to balance the budget. So they said the Navy couldn't afford 55 submarines, and there aren't sub Soviet submarines to hunt in the Indian Ocean. We cut them, we balanced the budget. In education, the bird scholarships, or even start for, pre for early children, we, those are duplicative, for example, of early start and head start. And the bird scholarships tend to go to those who aren't needy. So there's a smart way to do it, a practical way, not just where you slash and burn and say cute things in a race of cut taxes, cut government. What's he going to cut? We know that's on the table well, with ask, Social okay. Security. All right, let's so, ask it. So, so, right. so this, is, this is amazing. Joe voted for every single bailout, introduced right. additional bailouts, which would cost $100 billion of still more deficit spending, voted for the stimulus and giant omnibus spending, and, and he's pretending that he's a guy that wants to reduce spending. I mean, this is unbelievable. Let's talk about deficits. When, during the six years I was in the House, which ended six years ago, the average budget deficit was seven-tenths of one percent of our economy. Joe's voting for budget deficits that are now, each year, are roughly ten percent of our economy, fifteen times bigger. We're running one and a half trillion dollar deficits, and Joe says that we haven't spent enough. This is extreme policy, and it's dangerous for our economic future. But give me an idea what you would cut sure. specifically. I would, I would specifically end all these bailouts and certainly not launch a new one like Joe has advocated. I would rescind the unspent portion of the stimulus bill. I want to ban earmarks. Let me give you an example. Earmarks are a very pernicious and very wasteful uh, practice. It's where politicians try to bribe constituents with their own money. They go around and lord it over people and hand out a big check and get a photo op. You know what? They're spending taxpayer dollars very frequently on things that nobody would spend their own money on. Joe, so let me tell you, there were 123 opportunities for Joe to vote to strip out individual wasteful earmarks from appropriation bills. <clears throat> 122 out of the 123. This is no effort to rein in spending. All right, if quickly, I could. because you, you brought this up. Um, David, the, the holder of this seat now, Arlen Specter, <laughs> is well known for showing up in community after community with a big check in right. hand for a, a project. Are you saying you wouldn't David, you would end I, that? That's, yes, that's and, exactly what I'm saying. And, and a lot of Pennsylvanians won't be happy about it. Well, I think most Pennsylvanians understand that this is exactly how we've gotten into this mess, David. We are spending way too much money. We can't afford as this. As much as it may hurt. One, when they you know what? David. When we have a budget that's under control, when we get our fiscal house in order and we get taxes lower, they'll be much better off than these $250 million bridges to nowhere. Okay. And Congressman. Yes, thank you. Sure. Um, it's interesting. Of course he doesn't want the remaining portion of the stimulus to continue. The bulk, a heavy bulk of that is middle class tax cuts. He said what he would have done is given them to the corporations. No, I Eliminate all corporation tax cuts, all of them, when 66% already don't pay any U.S. taxes. But if I could, I'm the only one up here who actually has the legislation to end earmarks. Look, here's the issue. We have to control our spending. I voted for that law that puts a requirement back in that if you want a new program, cut another one. Remember, during the Bush-Toomey era, the gross domestic product, even if you remove the recession years, 
was the slowest growth since World War II. Zero jobs were created. But during the Clinton era, when I worked for President Clinton in the White House, we had the largest expansion, and 23 million jobs were done. But Congressman Toomey removed the requirement that a government had to cut a program if you want another one. Now he comes out, and in an election, all of a sudden, he thinks that we should control spending. He took over Club for Growth, where he <coughs> Club for Growth, where its president, its former president, said they had worked to change the Republican Party from a balanced budget party to a pro-deficit spending party. And now, and he says in Social Security we should invest it in Wall Street and to pay for it, David, if I could. To pay for it, he fine. says we should borrow from China. Okay. And so that's that how he's going to pit our solvency. Um, this, um, this is uh, this is going to have to be quick. Well, l well, let, let me just be clear. I mean, Joe, what bit. Joe has done with earmarks is really just unbelievable. He took a pledge and said, yeah, "I won't accept contributions yeah, from anybody who seeks an earmark from my office." And then the Philadelphia Inquirer discovered he had taken $129,000 in such contributions. They pointed it out to him, and Joe said, "Oh, well, I only meant during a limited period of time." So they looked it up and discovered, well, they had come during that period of time. And you know what he said at that point? He said, well, I never really meant for the pledge to be public. And then the House passed a rule. The House passed a Davis rule that said Washington. that we, uh, the Democrats, said we will only seek earmarks for um, not-for-profit companies. We won't seek them for for-profits. And what Joe did was he did $350,000 earmark to a sham not-for-profit that exists only on paper and which then funneled it to a for-profit. This is a terrible system, respond. Absolutely. and this has Thank to come you. to an Once end. Once again, Congressman Toomey, can't you tell the truth? You know, I went to Congress, and I was the only congressman that published, when it wasn't a requirement, any appropriations that was gotten. Any. And if a president of a corporation or a company or a university came to me, quietly without telling anyone, if he came, like the president of Widener University, wanted a pre-K school in the city of Chester for lower income, I couldn't take it. But his professor who gave $300 from the anthropology department or something, we did. Now, mind you, Congressman said he didn't take earmarks except in his first year. Then we find out he took them his second time. He has yet to publish who he got them from like I did. But worse than that, as a lobbyist for Club for Growth, he took millions of dollars and bonuses from Wall Street and corporations, and now they're funneling his campaign. My point is, the issue is influence of money. And so my point is, we don't want to have a senator at all from Wall Street. Okay, this can go someone on. someone from Pennsylvania who represents us. I want to get to uh, our next videotape question, which has to do with cuts. Uh, and this is our uh, question number two. Let's roll that tape right now. My name is Larry Collins. I live on the north side. And my question is, why is it that it seems to be the neighborhoods that have the most need for the services, the neighborhoods with people who don't have cars and access to, to different types of services, are the ones that have their bus services cut the most? Uh, you speak. Speaking specifically about bus service, but he could be talking about other uh, local neighborhood services, too. Congressman, let's start out with that. Absolutely. Larry, thank you. Been to Northside a number of times. I always remember what John F. Kennedy said, to neglect our cities, we do so to our peril, because to neglect our cities is to neglect America. And we truly have neglected our cities. Pittsburgh has lost approximately 17 percent of its population in the last 30 years. But that's because Pittsburgh, as well as the rest of Pennsylvania, haven't had the focus upon small businesses that they should. And worse, it's been our manufacturing prowess. Let me give you an example. Congressman Toomey said, when asked about the steel industry that was so strong right here in Pittsburgh, he said, well, they went bankrupt because of some of their own self-afflicted wounds. He actually said that because of labor contracts and mismanagement. But then, as a lobbyist, he took a petition to the Senate asking them to sign up opposing tariffs against China dumping their cheap steel. I'm going to have to interrupt here because I really would love if you would try to answer these questions.